Hello everybody and welcome back to my proposed future Japanese tank Tetri series. Now in today's episode we're actually looking at the heavy tanks, uh, something Japan didn't actually have an awful lot of. Um, they did build a few heavy tanks as prototypes and experiments but they generally didn't deal with heavy tanks um, and as you could see two of them are underlined and bolded which means basically I'm not sure if they could be added, if there's enough documents, uh, that sort of stuff. Um, but you know I'll try and give a good description of the various tanks as best I can um, hopefully you know they will be added into the game if Gaijin can find enough information uh, but you know um, just a short intro today so let's get straight into the episode now the first tank we're looking at is the type 91 heavy tank now this is a continuation of the design from the experimental tank number one which was Japan's first tank um, the design and was a very successful one considering it was a first design um, the only problem was it was a bit too heavy coming in at about 18 tons. The decision was taken to continue this design and they came up with the Type 91 heavy tank. Now it was armed with one Type 90 57mm tank gun, the same one used on the Type 89. It also had a 6.5mm machine gun in the turret but also two 6.5mm machine guns in their own separate turrets. So a multi-turret tank although only one tank gun. The armour was actually quite um, thin for its um, design for a heavy tank. Uh, 20 millimeters on the turret front, a uh, superstructure front and suspension front, and only 17 millimeters on the side. And you know, you can see it's not very sloped on the side, so you know, it wasn't particularly great um, armor wise. Its top speed on the roads was about 16 miles an hour, 15 miles an hour, so not the slowest tank in the world, but it was pretty slow. Lastly, it had a crew of five. Um, now, I don't know where the crew went, but I guess I'd say the driver, the two machine gunners for the separate turrets, and then probably two people in the um, actual main gun turret, uh, the commander and the gunner, or commander and the loader, possibly. It was possible the fifth person is a radio operator or something. I couldn't really find many details on that, unfortunately. Now, for its place on the tech tree, I've put the Type 91 quite low down in Tier 1. Uh, for one very simple reason, it has very thin armour. Um, it has an okay gun, um, if you use heat, the Type 90 has a penetration of about 55mm. But it has a low velocity gun, so you're going to have to get pretty damn close to your target. And, you know, it's 20mm of armour. Um, it's quite bad, I mean, I think the T26 has 15mm of armour, and that's a light tank. The light tank almost has as much armour as the as the heavy tank so personally I think it should be very low down in tier 1 not too low with the reserve tanks but um, it shouldn't be facing much past tier t um, about rating 2.3 or so otherwise it's just going to get slaughtered by everything it meets. Now the next tank after the Type 91 heavy tank is the Type 95 heavy tank basically the decision was taken to ex continue the design even further after the Type 91 and the Type 95 is a massive improvement uh, for one, it has a Type 94 70mm tank gun. Now again, the sources seem to disagree on how good this um, gun was. Some saying it had ridiculously low penetration even at close range. Others are saying 25mm at 1000 meters with AP, uh, or 90mm if it gets the heat round. So, you know, with the heat round it would be very effective. It was also armed with the Type 94 37mm gun. You can probably see it in the front of the tank. Now this, if reading my book by Zologa is correct, um, should have a penetration of about 40mm at 500m, so again, a pretty effective gun. It also had um, a 6.5mm machine gun in the main turret, presumably coaxial, but it also had another machine gun in the turret on the back of the turret. The armour of the Type 95 was also much improved, uh, between 12 and 30 millimeters of armour. Mostly um, focused on the turret front and superstructure front, but the sides and rears also had about 25mm, so quite thick armour for this, um, you know, compared to the last tank. Unfortunately, this came at a bit of a price. Uh, speed was reduced to about 13 miles an hour, down from about 14, 15, so uh, not too much slower, but still, in the lower tiers, when you're surrounded by lots of very fast um, tanks, that could be a bit of a problem getting to the objectives, you know, being outflanked, that sort of thing. Again, the crew seems to have been about five. Um, again, it doesn't. I don't know where the crew were, but I'm going to assume driver, the person in for the 37 millimeter turret, uh, maybe a loader for the 37 millimeter turret, um, 
and then presumably something similar with the main turret, Commander plus Loader or Commander plus Gunner, something like that. Now I've been a bit conflicted where to put this tank on the tech tree and battle rating right wise. Um, on the one hand it has a very good gun, possibly 90mm um, penetration with high explosive anti-tank. On the downside, it, despite much better armour, it's still pretty thin compared to pretty much every, every other tank, and it's ridiculously slow, so it's hard to know where to put it. Battle rating rise. Um, definitely tier 1, but uh, possibly one, possibly tier um, battle rating 2, uh, or a bit lower than that, it's really hard to know where to put it, but it needs to be in tier 1 and pretty low in tier 1, but not a bit higher than the Type 91, obviously. Um, maybe even 2.7 or something, you know, uh, the same as the Grant, which, so it'd be able to use its gun to good effect, but then it'd be easily destroyed. Um, maybe battle rating of 2, that's where I'd put it for the moment, but again, you know, it really does depend on how you look at it, I suppose, where it should go. Now the next tanks, the 100 ton and 120 ton OI heavy tanks, I can't actually show you any pictures of uh, because there basically are no pictures. So you'll have to just sort of ignore the repeating pictures unfortunately. But basically after the Type 95 the Japanese stopped building heavy tanks. They were just too cumbersome, too expensive. They, they just didn't need them. They had light and medium tanks that could do the job just as well if not better and you know for half the cost. But this was in 1934. Um, five years later, in 1939, the Japanese got involved in border disputes with the Soviet Union. Now, the Japanese tanks didn't do particularly well in this fighting, from what I can understand reading Saloga's book, and basically this spurred Japan to sort of up their game with regards to tank development. Uh, one of their developments was the 47mm gun, which we've looked at before, but another one was looking again at heavy tanks, such as the 100 ton heavy tank. Now, other than this, there isn't actually much information about the 100 ton tank. The only website that seemed to deal um, with any information on it was the uh, For the Record blog, which was, um, it's a, it was a blog affiliated with World of Tanks. Uh, you know, the, the author was quite connected to some of the people there. I'll link to the blog, but um, they basically collected lots of um, all the sources um, to do with the 100 ton tank. And long story short, it was a pretty damn heavy tank, uh, pretty big tank, and it failed mobility testing, it was sort of left to rot, or it was scrapped, um, basically it just didn't pass any of the testing. But like I say, it was massive, I mean it had internal corridors inside the tank, um, there's lots of, well there's a few disagreements on what it looked like exactly, um, and like I say, there's nothing left of it, oh, well, there's a tank track that was apparently from the 100 ton, ton tank, I'll leave a link to that as well. Um, but other than that, we don't really know any information about it. Um, we know it had a 105mm cannon, which this is in 1940, so that's a pretty big cannon. Now, looking on um, various websites, I couldn't find any penetration characteristics for the gun. There was only one website that mentioned it, um, and it mentioned 150mm of penetration at 100m, which puts it about on par with the M26 Pershing, the SU-100 and the Panther D. Now there's some disagreements on the armour, um, some sources say it was 75mm on the front, 35 on the side, uh, the For the Record blog mentions it being 150 on the front and 70mm on the side. If we go with the larger armour thickness, this puts it about on par with the Tiger II, the T-44 and the Sherman Jumbo, uh, all 1944 designs, um, remember this was 1940, this Japanese tank. If we go with the smaller armour thickness, this puts it on about on par with the KV-1, the Sherman Jumbo again, or the Panzer IV-G. Now, speed was apparently about the same as the Type 91, so about 15 to 16 miles an hour, which for a um, 100 ton tank is pretty good, um, if you ask me. Now, apparently the crew numbered about 11, which kind of surprised me, because apparently they only had the 105mm gun and one machine gun. Um, so I don't know what they were all doing. I don't you know, um, a gunner, loader, commander, driver, I don't know, machine gunner, and the rest must be radio operator or looking at the engine. Uh, apparently it was actually easy to get around the interior of the tank and there were even parts throughout the vehicle, uh, quoting from before the record. Um, and the driver's compartment, central fighting compartment, and engine room were separated by 16mm thick walls. Uh, so, you know, pretty good interior armour as well. 
So where would this go on the tech tree, if it was even included in the tech tree? Because remember, there isn't that much information about it. Um, I've put it about t tier 3 on the account of its massive gun and potentially thick armour. It depends really on what armour it uses. If it has the thicker armour, definitely tier 3. Or actually even with the thinner armour, tier 3. Um, depending on how thick the armour is, it could be high tier 3 or low tier 3. Battle rating wise, probably... I don't know, the same as the M6A1, maybe a bit higher. Uh, so probably the same as the Jumbo Sherman, about 5.3, maybe 5.7. So it's a bit hard to really guess where it could go, really. Um, but I think it would be a good addition if they, you know, find the if Gaijin find the documents on it. Uh, I think it would be an interesting tank, to say the least. Now, if there isn't much information about the 100-ton tank, there's even less about the OI 120-ton heavy tank. Uh, again, quoting from, for the record, who's in turn quoting from various Japanese sources, Japan had apparently caught wind of Germany's development of super heavy tanks such as the Mouse, and decided they would like to have a go, or one last go, at building the super heavy tank themselves. Uh, not sure what they would have done with it, where they would have used it, um, it looks too impractical to mass produce, but they decided to start developing one anyway. It was supposed to again be equipped with a 105mm gun. Um, in the main turret, but it also had two turrets, um, one with a Type 147mm tank gun and the other with a Type 97 7.7mm machine gun. And in the rear of the tank there was a machine gun turret with two 7.7mm machine guns. Um, apparently it was also meant to have 200mm heavy armour, although it doesn't say where the armour would have been. Again, speed would have been about 15-16 miles an hour, um, consider it's 20 tonnes heavier, I don't know how they managed that. Again, there was apparently 11 crew, but I'm not, again, I'm not really sure where they would all go on the tank, you know, I know the basics like driver, gunner, loaders, stuff like that, but I think, that, again, there's a few that, you know, not sure where they would be. But, um, ultimately, the OI 120 tank, ton tank was never used. Um, there's confusion about what, well, what, how far along development it got. Uh, some say it was completed and sent to Manchuria, uh, some say it was scrapped, um, I really ca I can't see why it would be sent to Manchuria. They was keeping all their good tanks behind in Japan by this point of the war. Um, I don't know why they'd then send it off to Manchuria. So surely they'd just scrap it or keep it like with the Chiri as you know, just a one-off tank to use in the final defence. Uh, I don't know. Um, if it gets added into War Thunder, it would have to be Tier Four because it it's got a good gun. It's got very thick armour. Um, battle rating probably. The same as the Jumbo 76 or something, uh, 5.7, possibly 6, uh, something around there. Not too high, but again, not too low. But really, I doubt Gaijin will even add this tank. I mean, information is so hard to find on it, and, you know, there's not many records left about it. So, I mean, I've added it in just in case, but um, honestly, I don't think this would get into the game. But like I said, battle rating of 6 if it did. I think it would be a very fun tank, but... You know, a nice little counterpart for the mouse, but I'm not holding out too many hopes for it to be added into the game. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Um, like I said, I'll link any of the websites I used in the description. Um, but like I said, I, I, I'm not sure if some of these will be added. The 100 ton and 120 ton especially um, do seem rather uh, hit and miss if they could be added. The 100 ton possibly could, the 120 ton I... I seriously have doubts, but, you know, I included it just in case. Type 95 and Type 91 should definitely be included. I think they'd be very good additions. Even if they were just added in as premium tanks or in one of the other lines, I think they'd be very good additions for the Japanese tank tech tree. But, um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Uh, leave a like if you liked it. Uh, subscribe if you like these sorts of videos. Leave feedback, could always do with more feedback. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.